Welcome ladies and gents, Chris Andre here. You can find me at Bet Boxing on Twitter. Of course, you can subscribe to the channel. Let's talk boxing. What a fantastic fight in terms of the adjustments that were made. The quality on display from both men was absolutely superb. We're going to get deep. We're going to get technical and talk about some of those adjustments. In terms of my scorecard, I had Lomachenko winning the fight seven rounds to five. Rounds one, three, four, eight to nine, ten and eleven. I had going to Lomachenko. Rounds one and four, though, I felt were swing rounds, especially round one. Um, I agree essentially with Shakur Stevenson. It was Lomachenko landing the cleaner stuff. And in round one, you'll see that somewhere you, Devin Haney's landing, but often it's sort of like clipping or just on the elbows or sort of half elbow, half ribs. And it depends on what you consider to be clean and effective punching in those particular rounds where Loma's landing cleaner, but Haney's activity is perhaps greater, but not landing flush. Um, so it was one of those sorts of, of fights for a couple of the, the early rounds. I felt that Loma really could have closed the show very well. But by the end of the 11th round, the middle of the 11th round, after he had this fantastic flurry where Haney was all over the place and it was looking like Haney could get stopped here, Loma took his foot off the gas. And I don't think that was a conscious effort. When I'm watching it live, I thought it was a conscious effort. I thought he was thinking to himself, I've got this round in the bag, but I'm not going to knock Haney out necessarily. So let me take my foot off the gas so I can come on strong in the 12th. But instead, he didn't come on strong in the 12th. So for me, it just looked like he got tired. And this is why I was saying, and everybody was saying really, that was completely unbiased and neutral and has half a brain about him, that things like size and age matter, okay? Because stamina is involved. Physical strength is involved. When their bodies are coming together, and I thought Harvey Dock did a good job about stop, uh, regarding stopping the clinching, by the way. Um, I don't think that was a big issue in the fight. But their bodies were still coming together. And you saw on two, three occasions when they did come together, Loma was sort of bundled to the floor. Or they bumped each other and Loma fell on the floor. Size matters. These things matter. And that takes a lot out of you in terms of stamina, right? It has an effect. But this is why... It, it, it does play a big role. Loma is significantly smaller than the guys he's operating against. And maybe this fight now will make the uh, Lomachenko's overrated crowd stop talking absolute rubbish. Because, uh, listen, even if you had it to Devin Haney narrowly, you saw the level on display there from Lomachenko. Where Haney had a lot of success early on, we're going to talk about the adjustments. Um, early on, you saw the very first round, Loma's getting on his back foot, Haney's trying to probe, trying to find the individual pot shots, they weren't really landing clean, on a couple of occasions, Loma let go of some flurries, he landed a nice shot, a nice little uppercut through the guard as well, um, and it, it was looking like Loma was looking to start earlier, make sure he lands something, we spoke about the importance of that in the preview to the fight, the second round, it was Haney that started to take over, the third and the fourth were very nip and tuck, Sorry, the, the fourth was a very nip and tuck round whereby, again, it was very technical. I felt Loma was outworking him. Then Haney seemed to establish a rhythm. And one of the things he was doing was starting to land that backhand to the body quite consistently. He would just literally, he's, we spoke in the preview about how he lowers his, his level. So he's almost eye to eye with the opponent rather than fighting tall and leaning back. And we spoke about that in the preview and Chris Algieri picked up on it too. And from that low position, he's essentially providing three barriers you need to get by. My lead leg, which is further out, my my lead hand, which is sort of stuck out as well, long limbs that you've got to get past. And then I've got the backhand as well. The way he was using the backhand, again, as we mentioned in the preview, is to the body. When Loma would come in and try to throw that shot, Haney would roll and come back with that shovel hook to the, the body to, and uh, right hook around the, the ribs. And at that point, Chris Algieri was saying he was surprised. You don't really see much of that with Devin Haney. Get Chris Algieri to subscribe to Chris Audrey Boxing. He would have seen that it was something we expected to happen. Um, so he was having a lot of success with that. Then you saw Lomachenko adjust. And what Loma started to do was pivot out away from that. So as he's trying to throw that right hand, the moment he does that, he's got the lead hand pinned. He would step to the outside of that and he's taking everything off of the shot. It's barely clipping him at that point. He's not following through. Sometimes he'd miss. The problem that Loma had though, there was a big difference in that size and mass up close so although there wasn't there wasn't holding when they were being bumped inside he couldn't really let go of combinations apart from a one two and then they sort of coming together again and there were points where Devin when he would change the level you saw that Loma started to step around him and again you saw Haney's fantastic adjustment he would bow down forward but then pivot out while he's bent forward to turn with Loma as well and again he's staying quite close with his body and sometimes you'd see as Loma's turning him his feet would come off the floor because it's like he's riding on top of Devin as they're both turning it was really intricate in, uh, stuff in there 
and the the mass of Devin was preventing Loma from being able to land combinations and he was ducking low below the waist as we say that he likes to do so Loma would often just put his hands on the back of his neck and just lean forward essentially saying to him okay you're going to carry my weight then if you're going to stop me getting combinations off now while that's an investment for later in the fight to stop him doing it and to tire him out it's not scoring you opportunities where Loma started to turn it around again is that his father Anatoly told him in the corner jab 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 and Loma had started after the first four rounds to neglect the lead hand when he started to find a home for the jab he was really out maneuvering Devin Haney with the lead hand tonight when he started to find a home for that that's when things started to look really good for Lomachenko and he took over in the latter part of the fight um there was little moments where he just dropped these very short hooks these short jabs and work off of that there was another lovely moment i think it was in round 10 or 11 where i think it was in round 10 he dropped a nice little body shot and then rose with that too with a head shot as well and that, that was just beautiful stuff so when he started to bring the the lead hand and, and start to bamboozle Haney with the lead hand, he started to really take over. In that last round, he seemed tired, Devin bit down on that gum shield, and he just outworked Vasil Lomachenko, and Loma just couldn't seem to find the energy levels to get going. Um, but, like I said, I personally had Lomachenko winning the fight seven rounds to five. The 116-112 scorecard for Devin Haney um, for, for Moretti was unusual to me because he gave round 10 to Devin Haney. I don't know how he got about to give it in round 10. Shocking. And one thing we did speak about with Steve Kim when I had him on earlier in the week is who would the fight go to if it was a close fight? And at the time, both Kim and I, Steve Kim and I were saying, look, it's more likely to be Lomachenko because he's the one contracted to top rank. But I did raise something to think about. I was saying that we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. If Devin Haney has agreed to stay with top rank and to fight again with a top rank fighter, it might suit them more for Devin Haney to win the fight. Why? Because a fight between Haney and Shakur generates a lot more money than Haney, sorry, than Shakur and Lomachenko. By the same token, a fight between Devin Haney and Teofimo Lopez generates a lot more money than Loma Teofimo Lopez too, you would think, because it goes back to the history that they've had and stuff like that. And even without belts, even with this loss, Loma Teofimo too, if Tio was to beat or lose to Josh Taylor regardless, still generates a lot of money anyway. So it sort of suits top rank financially if they're going to hold on to Devin for Devin to win the fight. Now, I'm not saying anything untoward occurred here today, but it was interesting to consider how this fight could have been scored in terms of benefiting the money men, the power brokers of this sport. Let me know what you think, ladies and gents, in terms of how that fight went. Let me know how you scored it. Now people can see, though, why I was saying that if I've been saying for many years, if Devin, Hay if Vasil Lomachenko was the same size as the rest of these lightweights, he would score them all. We're talking about a significantly smaller guy and he's still able to hang with these elite level, bigger lightweights like Haney, like Tiafimo Lopez. He is something special. So hopefully now the he's overrated crowd will just disappear it's kind of like a roman chocolatito roman gonzalez situation here a smaller guy operating against much larger men okay he didn't get the decision say against estrada but you can see the level of roman you can see he's an all-time great and it's the same sort of thing with lomachenko a young king tonight got the decision against boxing royalty and i like the way that was mentioned in the preview the young king challenging boxing royalty i could see that and devin haney has done enough tonight to put himself into a position where he really grows his name in the sport so hopefully we get to see some bigger fights i do personally agree like i said with shakur stevenson of how he saw the fight and i'm sure that's going to cause a back and forth maybe we get to see that fight next Shakur was saying that Devin Haney ran out the ring my missus was watching it with me and she turned it to me at that moment and said Devin Haney's not going to take the Shakur fight he doesn't he doesn't want that fight I could see from his psychology he wanted to get away as quickly as possible he didn't want to start a trash talking contest with Shakur even though he's been willing to do it in other scenarios online so let me know what you think about that can you imagine Devin Haney taking on Shakur next if not where does he go? Let me know what you think about everything, ladies and gents. Please don't forget to hit a stiff jab on the like button, the right cross on the subscribe button, and an uppercut on the notifications button. Thanks for watching. Chat to you soon. Take care. God bless.